Good afternoon. This is Dr. Bill White again with the American Orthodontic Society, and I want to talk this afternoon about expansion of lower cuspids. And you can expand lower cuspids. The only thing you have to bring the roots back with the crowns. You can't just spread the cuspids out like that and they'll come back together again over a period of time. And so for sometimes years ago now, it's probably changed in most areas, uh, it was thought that you could not expand these cuspids, that they would come back regardless whether you extracted teeth or didn't extract teeth. And uh, it was uh, pretty well established from Washington University there in Washington State, and they had a, one of the nicest guys you've ever run into was the head of the orthodontic department there, and it was his idea that uh, this could not be done. But what I think happened was he told the students to expand the heart, the cuspids, and when they did, they just moved them apart like this. The thing you have to do if you're going to expand cuspids is move the roots behind the crowns and go back in that fashion. And so I could not take what he was saying, but he was a very nice gentleman and treated me very respectfully. And I went back to, to see that this I, I could not imagine that some mystical way the cuspids always came back together again like that. It just didn't make sense to me. So I uh, found a person who had the most crowded cuspids I've ever seen, and I'm going to show this case uh, to you, but I'm just going to show a few slides, and if you really want to see the whole thing, you can go on. I have a video of the whole thing with it. You can go over it uh, there. But this is something I want to cover with you, and I will get started here and try not to take too much time. I think that my button has to be activated here before I can get the slides to change. Now here is the young lady that we picked out to do this. Uh, this is 1973, and I uh, went in and expanded these cuspids, but I took out the, the bicuspids on the lower arch to, to do this. Uh, and apparently she had some other bad teeth as where we end up with a, a I think the molars extracted on the upper or something like that. But here the case is in 1973, and we were using uh, brack, I mean bands back then, of course, and we banded the teeth, and that didn't ma matter. And when you look at it, you've got a deep bite, but a class one molar relationship back in the back, even though it's a class two in the anterior part, and the lower anteriors are crowded up some. The uppers look pretty good. We have the bicuspids there and the cuspids, the laterals, everything look fairly well. And here is the lower arch though. And in the lower arch, this is the crowdedest case that I have ever seen. And this is the tips of the cuspids are right here somewhere and going back like that. And here are the four. Here's the lateral, the central, the central, and the lateral again. And we're going to expand those teeth and line them up. And we watched this lady carefully for 20 years. And I had her back and I've got some signs on her 20 years later after she has grown up. So this is 1973, and this is the way her cuspids were. We're just going to touch part of the slides this morning for this afternoon. Now, one year later, we were working on this, and I had extracted 
the cuspids, I mean, excuse me, the first bicuspids on the bottom, and that gave us some room for these cuspids to slide over, and we took these and lined these teeth up. Now, according to their uh, wishes, it didn't matter whether you took teeth out or not, if you expanded the cuspids, they were going to go back in that position. And I could not uh, believe that some mystical way for these teeth to do that. Uh, uh, that just didn't set right with me. So anyway, here we go. We put uh, some expansion in. This is a long time ago. And this is a year later. And we had gotten into the work and everything was banded and all this. We used bands, of course. They didn't get the brackets quite that quick. And so we're going to push the cuspids over. But what we did, we took the cuspids and went back with them, but I let the root lead the crowns back. So the, the roots of the cuspids were back more distal than the crown in most of, most of these teeth right here. So here we go in 1974. And here the young lady is uh, with the uh, brackets on her upper anterior teeth, and she's matured quite a bit and looks a lot uh, nicer. And here are the teeth. Now they're almost in place right here. The uh, one central that was really further back, we're bringing it to, to the anterior part of the mouth, and we'll bracket in and bring make the root come forward and line up and be parallel with the other roots of these see that here are the cuspids now uh, here's the uh, laterals the centrals and these are the cuspids now this distance from here to here and you remember it was something about like that before it's almost twice as big as it was to start with and uh, so it is. It was a crowd of discussions I think I've ever seen before or since in there, and we had that as a example for this, and I think it really uh, paid off and everything. So anyway, here we go. We've got some class two elastics uh, hooked up. We got a couple of hooks up here. It looks to me like. We may have had some stuff. You have to look at the whole video of her. There's so many slides on there. It take me a long time to get through it, so I didn't want to just go through it. But you can go back and look at that. It's got all the pictures that we took on the lady. And we're opening the bite, by the way. Oh, all right, here is the, uh, we've got the cuspids back here. We're going to have to rotate them, of course, and line them up. And then we're going to have the roots of these cuspids. Of course, these are the upper cuspids, but they need to be back, too, when we come in. Now, the lower ones will be a lot further than that. All right, that's in 1974. And here is the lower and we're bringing this root forward, and we'll bring it out and where it's lined up and parallel with the rest of the uh, roots in there. And now there is the cuspid teeth, and the distance in between there is almost twice as what it was when we started the case. You can go back and measure it. I don't know this exactly that much, but it, it is a heck of a lot more. And we bring the roots back as we do that. All right, here's 74. Now, two years from the beginning. And uh, so here we are in 1975. And uh, the upper centrals are lined up pretty good. Everything uh, going all right. And we've got the lower cuspids now are back. And the lateral, uh, the central, that we were torquing it, we we're putting torque on it, bringing this root in this direction, bring it into this and line it up with the other teeth and line this one up too. And here are your cuspids rotated and sitting at the same position and about the same distance out as they were 
This was 1975. And so we had, had it lined up at that point pretty good. Now here we will show the x-rays. This is 1973, and this is an old, old x-ray, but the uh, molar teeth are lined up pretty good, except that the upper is way out further forward than the lower in here. Now this one worked out all right, but this down here is uh, there's a little problem with it. Here's a wisdom tooth coming in and coming in back here and wisdom tooth there and I don't know whether a wisdom tooth came in on the upper uh, left there I think or not. All right, we go to 1975 and we've got everything banded in there and we have only one molar up in the back and the wisdom tooth is back up above that and we have the space. See, we brought these teeth forward when we took out the first bicuspids on the bottom. We moved the teeth back just a little and then we brought these teeth forward to kind of close the space up there. Now this was not to interfere with the uh, cuspids lining up again. But now we're going to bring the cuspid roots back as we bring them in and we're trying to tilt them so that the crown is something like that. You'll have a little angle to the teeth in here. Now what I suspect, and I do not know that that's right or not, we've got this, this case here is 81 and we're finished uh, with the case. But you can see the roots of these are back. This is straight up and down, kind of back like this. But I think what happened, the students were in a hurry, and so they just expanded the, the crowns and left the roots where they were, and maybe that, that's just a possibility. I do not know that at all. But I think that poss possibly... They just expanded the crowns, put the stuff in, and later the teeth come back over the roots, and they did it on every case. And so this is why uh, they reported that you cannot expand lower customers, but you can. I mean, you can do that. So uh, I'm going to go to I think that's, well, this is a x-ray that we took in 1992. And we've got two lower molars, but we've got only one molar, upper molar in there. And if you look carefully, uh, this is a split deal. We have only one bicuspid. There it is. And this cuspid is tilted like that. And this one is like this. Now this, now these, that's the uh, lateral, the centrals. And this is a cut x-ray. Uh, an old panorex that I used all the time. And all the teeth were tilted, if you will, that way. In 92, the case still held up. I mean, let me go back here just a minute. I think that's about the end of the record that I have to show it. And this is two, 12 years uh, 12 years from the beginning of the case. Now here is a young lady, and this is after we finished, it's somewhere around 12 years, I think, 1985, and we had a retainer over there with a slight bite plate, and both bicuspids are present on the top, but apparently the molars are gone here. Now on the bottom, we had the two molars, but the, we extracted the first bicuspid right in, in this gap right here. But these cuspids were put in and we brought the root structure back to some extent there so they had no indication of, of moving up. Now this was 1985 and we started it in 1973. 
So it's this is 10 years after we got out of it, and this was still there, and we followed this case for 20 years. And I took pictures of it, and let's go on. And so, so here's 20 years from the beginning of this, and here the case is in 1993 when we started in 73. And this is lined up. We have opened the bite. These upper teeth were down about like that. So we, we open the bite and we line these teeth up. And you look at that cuspid and it's got a kind of an angle like that. Here, coming over, this one has an angle on it too. And so, and I think even the anteriors were slightly angled in like that. And this is 20 years after we started. So it's only been done, say, about 18 years at this point. And I would tell you, if, if this woman is still alive, I would give you, I would bet you anything that this woman still has her lower cuspids where they were, and they did not go back. So we'll go ahead and see. Now, there are the lower anterior teeth in 1993 and they are still there after that and I would imagine from 93 to uh, 103 and let's see uh, that's 19 it's more than that 19 years of that it's nearly 29 years so it's 2020 uh, now so that's I would bet you that those teeth are still there today. If this lady is alive and even if she's passed on, they're probably still in that position. So I'm going to, I don't want to lead anybody wrong in telling you what to do in this, but I honestly believe that if you get the root structure back on these cuspids where they're not sitting there spread out and then this come back the root if you spread those roots out those teeth stay there and so that's uh, was proof enough to me so I've got many cases that we have expanded the lower cuspids and had no fear of them collapsing only that that way so uh, Whatever you do in orthodontics, uh, I don't think you'd go wrong if you expand them. But I know back years ago, people were extracting lower anterior teeth to prevent expansion of the lower cuspids. And so here the lady is in 1993. They have a bite closed. We've got a, a bite open now. And she's got overbite and overjet. The teeth don't look the same exactly, but apparently we uh, worn these off a little bit coming across here. They sure look broader down here. But this is the same woman, because I know I didn't slip anybody else in there on that case. Oh, never have I done that. But anyway, uh, th this is her teeth uh, in 93 and in 73. Now, we'll go ahead and look. In 93, this is the lower, and there the lower is in 73. And these cuspids are out about that far. And right here, if you put the top of that Cuspid down to there, and one here, and this gap right here is almost is half of what this one is. This is not twice as much, but it is pretty well there. And those teeth are in the same place they were in 20 years after 19, uh, I think 70 or 19. Uh, 77 or something like that, 75, uh, they were lined up like that. So, 
I think you can, I can tell you that you can expand lower cuspids. 